Being a Black Belt by Ryan Shanahan. Ancient philosophy asks, if given a moment to live, would you choose to be a better version of yourself or worse? Invariably, we might well assume most of us, if not all, would say better. But do we mean it? Let me ask another question. If given a moment to live, how would you spend it? Some will say with family, friends, doing what we love, enjoying that moment in good company. Others will have a different idea of what time well spent means. Indulgence, thrill-seeking, and abuses are common examples on the other side of the pool. Yet it remains almost a given that, given the choice between one and the other, we will say we choose the better. What is better? Or when are you your best self? Does the answer you give to this question jibe with the answer you gave to the second and the first? Identifying with the answers to this thought experiment clarify our values. In the absence of objective truth or transcendent principles to guide our existence, we are tasked with the burden of defining values of our own. Such values are historically codified in practices of self-discipline. Google's maxim, don't be evil, and truths defined as self-evident are good examples. The values of Taekwondo are characterized by the five tenets, courtesy, integrity, perseverance, self-control, and possessing an indomitable spirit. It goes without saying that dedication to a pursuit, physical, mental, organizational, or other, and more specifically achievement in such pursuits, is tied heavily to how well you have exemplified the values standardized by the pursuit, and additionally reflects the values you innately uphold. In testing for the rank of black belt in Taekwondo, in addition to the physical components, the questions, have I upheld the tenets of the art, and do I reflect the values and skills representative of the rank I wish to obtain, should be expected and are usually determined long before testing takes place. When I ask myself, when am I my best self, I reflect on my history as a student, a teacher, an active agent unto myself within my environment. This is to suggest, as we all might find, that learning, teaching, and being active in our circumstances, not simply reactive, we are able to live good lives according to our current understanding of what is good. So long as what we learn is true and useful, what we teach is correct, valuable, and how we act isn't only or always in self-interest. But these are subjective views, relevant only individually. Taekwondo also represents more than the sum of five values and necessitates the need for a comprehensive physical exam that we endeavor to undertake. The physical discipline of martial arts is one way of coming to understand ourselves better through constant challenge. It isn't the only way, but the skills, strengths, and confidence cultivated by the discipline are somewhat unique in their ability to fortify a person to uphold the values he's come to identify with. The German philosopher Nietzsche envisioned a character he dubbed the Overman or Uberman, a German expression that can be translated as Superman. This Superman was to be a perfectly self-actualized individual, holding his own values greater than the self and able to influence others even past his own generation. This Overman need not be a perfect individual, but be accepting of life's absurdities and failings and yet find redemption in them. That even with much hardship, the past should never be changed because even past faults have led him to become who he is, to become an Overman. This reminds me of an old Chinese painting titled The Three Vinegar Tasters. The painting depicts three men representing the three great Chinese philosophies, Confucius, Buddha, and Lao Tzu representing Taoism. Confucius tastes the brew and thinks it is sour and needs correction, just as society needs guidance through strict rule. Buddha then tastes and thinks it is bitter. Bitter is life, too extreme for the body and an example of the suffering found in life. But then Lao Tzu tastes the vinegar and says, it is sweet. Our perspective colors our experience. Mark Twain wrote, what gets us into trouble is not what we don't know, it's what we know for sure that just ain't so. The Taoist would say that life is a teacher with great lessons we must learn. If we learn to appreciate those lessons and work with them, life will be sweet. An overman can be found in each of us, striving to live up to our current understanding and current potential, moment by moment and day by day. 
the life of a martial artist, and the path towards black belt and beyond is a fantastic avenue to pursue this ideal. With sweat and blood and tears and triumphs and advances and honors, to the martial artist, each is a part of the journey necessary for self-cultivation, and to the Taoist, all such experiences are very sweet indeed. The path to this point in training is an almost lifelong pursuit when coupled with obligations and other things that will occasionally take us from the path. Many don't have sufficient means or opportunity to pursue martial training as they might prefer, as has been the case many times in my life. Yet the respect of the martial arts and desire to continually develop within this discipline endures. This is an important characteristic of those who seek a black belt. The path and discipline is long anyway, and those who have achieved this rank have shown a dedication and fortitude that is an iconic representation of what a black belt is. As such, the black belt itself is neither the culmination of skills achieved in the school nor the finalization of all our training, only another step along a path of self-advancement and personal achievement. There is much work to be done. Winston Churchill once said, "Success is not final, failure is not fatal." It is the courage to continue that counts. The black belt is a symbol that represents a way of looking at life and living it. I do not become a black belt one day because I complete a test, but I receive the title of black belt because I have lived as a black belt, trained as a black belt, acted like a black belt, and sought the skills and knowledge of a black belt in each class, in each practice, each day for many years. The title is less important than the cultivation of the person seeking it, and is achieved by those who see it as a responsibility, a way of life, and a beginning of more to come. It is and has been an ambitious undertaking. It is a great thing to represent. Further sentiments I might confer may be best summed up by the American poet Henry Longfellow, who once wrote, "The heights of great men reached and kept were not attained in sudden flight." But they, while their companions slept, they were toiling upwards in the night. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please give a like and subscribe to the channel so that you get updates for all of our future videos. We have about a hundred videos on this channel now, and as we move forward, I appreciate your support by taking a look at all of our content and sharing it with your friends. I would also very much appreciate your comments and personal thoughts about what being a black belt means to you. Or if you're pursuing your black belt currently, tell me about your experiences. Until next time, stay active.